John, can you tell me what's taking place today? Uh, we're doing a speaking engagement in regards to my background in real estate and how I might be able to help the people that are coming here in regards to just being more, I don't know, like do more business, now, make more money. What made you decide to give a, a course like this today? What's so special about this? Well, one, one, if I can help the people in the room, then they'll be able to help me. And that's just how I like my philosophy in life is. Help the people in the room as far as in real estate? Yeah, in real estate, just any way I can help them out, typically it'll benefit me in the long run. Can you tell me and the viewers that will be watching this video, what's so special about getting into real estate or doing real estate or what's so special about it? Well, what, what I like about it, it gives you a lot of freedom. You know, there's thousands of different ways to make money in real estate. There's not just one way. And you're in your own like zone of what you can make. You can make a little bit of money or you can make as much money as you want. It's a self-employed type business. It's just something that I picked and that I do very well and I like to see others do well as too. In, in closing, what would you like to say to the viewers and people watching this video? Well, if there's anything I can do to help them out, I'm very accessible. I'm more than happy to answer questions. They can always feel free to give me a call. My number is 586-944-5646. And if I can help them in some fashion, typically it'll benefit both of us in the long run. Now, do you have an email, anything you'd like me to attach to? No, just my, my phone number is probably the easiest place to contact me. Okay. Um, my staff really looks over my email, so it's best just to give me a call and I can just talk to you and help you out in whatever way I can. Okay, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. I met John back when my old, his old company that I worked for, I just ran into him on the foreclosures, the short sales. I, I, he was out there just... And I was out there looking for all those type of houses. And that's where I met him originally. And then six years ago, I went on my own, heard about wholesaling, had no idea. I had no idea there was good people like everyone in this room. And we try to help each other and teach each other. I thought my the company I worked for, we were the only ones that knew what we were doing. We, were, we had a hundred rentals, we sold them all before the crash. So we had a lot of money, did about 70 refis a month before the crash and all that. So, but long story short, um, market crash, my income got cut 50 grand a year, my beautiful car got taken away, the gas, I, fired, I was vice president, fired 25 employees, and um, realized this guy, controlled, they controlled my life. So, so things changed, so I started working on weekends and working on the side and started buying at foreclosure. I was already buying with the other company, so we started buying in Flint, in Genesee County, at the foreclosure auction. It was fun. I'll tell you the story one day, or if you hear my podcast, and and then decided to go on my own, quit my, my day job on January 1st, 2000, I think it was 17 or 16, pretty sure it was 17, and haven't looked back, learned a lot. So I try to teach others what not to do, because I've done it. In the last six years, I've done all the things you probably shouldn't do. You shouldn't have 12 flips going on unless you're John Graham or you already know what you're doing. I had no idea and um, just went crazy. So um, things are starting to roll really, really well for me as in the wholesaling game. And now I'm starting to do some um, foreclosure. We're doing really good at foreclosures and, and also the, um, starting to pick up some rentals. So, and, um, so anyway. Enough about me. I got Mr. John Graham here, and um, I, I was at a meetup, and I heard him speak. It was outstanding, and so I asked him to come. I, I already knew when I heard him that he was going to come and speak for me one day. And um, so I want to introduce you to Mr. John Graham. And John, just I want you to tell us a little bit about you, how you got started, and just go into your, your story. During all the time when I listed and sold, I always bought and sold. Uh, the first house I ever did was in 1997. You know, I started working with investors and as a real estate agent, and then I just went to a house, and I just was like, I'm just going to buy it. They, they couldn't show up or anything like that. I'm just going to do it. And I'm, I'm like a spoiled suburban kid. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't even paint a wall in my whole life. 
You know, my, my, my dad made well over $100,000 in the 80s. You know, just ridiculous. So, like, I never had to do any of that, but I always wanted to do it, so I just did it. And I figured it out, and then I started doing more and more. Um, so that's kind of, like, briefly, I'll get into a lot more stuff. Like, I also had a property management company at one time with 1,000 units in it, all right? I also have flipped, like, well over... 2,000 houses. So, I mean, that's just kind of some of the accolades I have. I'll get into, like, how I started. I'll start, I start, like, we almost started to do it even before we started the meeting. So, when I, when I was, like, 15 years old, all right, I would always do my homework during, like, the late night show, like David Letterman at the time it was. So, again, I'm kind of dating myself, but you know, we're talking about in the 80s. So 15 years old, I'm watching TV, doing my homework, maybe just watching TV. But um, so after the David Letterman show was on, there was this dude that was on named Carlton Sheets. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he just like, he captivated me. There's this dude out here, zero money down, waving around big ass checks. Like, I'm like, I want to be that, that dude. I want to be that dude. And I was very young, so I was like 15 years old. So don't think you guys are really young doing this. You know? In fact, I, I know a wholesaler right now that actually he's right around your age, and he probably makes a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Wow. Yeah. He's like, he's, like a, he's, like, he's like a freshman at Michigan State. So very similar to you guys' age. So don't think it's like an age has anything to do with any of this. All right, you could do it at any age. It's all what you have in your mind that would inspire you to be able to do something or not do something. So I saw that guy and I was like, "Wow, this is the coolest thing ever!" But there's no way that I'm going to spend two hundred some dollars on a stupid, you know, like tapes or whatever. And actually, I found a library that had them, and I just rented them. So you know, I was just being like, you know, kind of like, you know, oh, how do I do this without you know paying for all this? Even though, like, my parents would have probably did it for me anyways, but I just didn't feel like spending 200 bucks on it. And, and at the time, I was just too young to really th fathom of what all that meant. You know what I mean? I couldn't figure it out at that time. You know what I mean? I didn't have the right head on my shoulders at that time at 15, but it was always there. I just thought it was cool. Sounds cool. That's why everybody's in the room, right? You know what I mean? It would be great to do real estate and make a hell of a lot of money, right? Everybody can't disagree with that fact. Um, so it was always there. So, you know, then I, then I got my job at Red Lobster. That's the only, like, regular job I've ever had. Started when I was 15 years old and actually worked there until I was, like, 27. That's the interesting part. So I started doing real estate back in, like, 1995, all right? And I, at that time, I was 25 years old. I never had an adult conversation in my whole life. I, I skateboarded. That's what I really cared about. So, like, I couldn't go up to a, any normal person and go, hey, man, I just kick flipped a 10 stair. You probably don't even know what the hell that all means, right? But that's what I cared about. You know, so, like, I couldn't, I didn't have adult conversations because I was such in the skateboard scene. And I worked at Red Lobster, and I was not a verbal person at the time, too. Like a lot of young guys are, they just don't feel like they need to talk a lot. Now you can't get me to shut up, but, you know, I, you know at that time, I, I didn't say much of anything. I just let my actions, you know, perform. Like, I was always good at work. I could outperform everybody there. And I was so happy that I got into real estate because I could do whatever I wanted to do and make as much money as I wanted. When you work for somebody else, there's a limit on what you can make. And they also limit out what you can do. You know, like, hey, you're only making this much, and this is the only thing you can do. Well, in real estate, there's a thousand different ways to make money doing it. There's not one way to do it, so you can figure out what your way is. And maybe it's just one thing, and that one thing can make you a lot, a lot of money. So don't think you have to be like well-versed. You could just figure out what that one thing is and just do that. And sometimes it takes trying a lot of different things to figure out what that was. So started in 95, still worked at Red Lobster. And then within two years... I was making well over $100,000 and working at Red Lobster still because I didn't know how to quit my job because I never quit a job before. And I couldn't tell anyone at Red Lobster that I was making that kind of money because they just think I was like crazy. Because like 
One, I could I'll work everybody there, but that was a handful to deal with. Like you try anybody try to tell me to do anything, I'd be like, screw you. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't not doing nothing. You're saying, in fact, I was going to do that because you told me to do it. I'm not doing it no more. I was just like very, very reluctant to, to have anybody try to control me. And that was that good of an employee that they just wouldn't fire me. You know, because I could do two, three, four people's jobs very easily. Because I just was able to figure out and make that commitment. And I just work that way. It's just, and I'm still that way even today. I'm just here to outwork everybody. And, and I'm, I'm kind of here... Like even like as my being is to show people that you can do things that you don't believe that you can do. And I do it on a daily basis. I work that hard. I do that much real estate. Like my numbers, like what, let's just talk about what I'm doing right now the, to make, make it so you can kind of understand why I'm saying this is that I always ask the question and, and maybe you guys can try to even guess it. How many houses do you think I'm flipping right now? Somebody give me a number. 25. 25? Go higher. 22. Higher. 200. I'm at 115. Okay? So mo mo most people like are like, whoa, that doesn't even seem right. And you may even think that right now. How can, how can you acquire that much real estate? How can you get that many good deals on properties? I'm just willing to work that hard to do it. And in my mind, I can do it. And again, everybody in this room... If you want to accomplish something or don't want to accomplish something, it's all really just up in your head. So just remember, you're going to be either your best person to help you out to do something or your worst enemy. And usually, it's your, your own worst enemy. Because most people have this thought that they have this limit. And that's what I try to fight every single day of my life is that limit. I don't want to limit. I don't want anybody to limit me. In fact, I want to do the opposite. I want to prove to everybody that I can do more than anybody could even think a person could do because I just want to. That's just how I am. So this, we're back in now in 1997. I'm making you know six figures in real estate, still working at Red Lobster. I go on my honeymoon and then never go back to Red Lobster again. So I'm done with that. All right, And then, and then just every year after that, I start acquiring houses to flip, and I just sell a hell of a lot of real estate. All right, I just keep on selling more every single year, just figuring out what I need to do, how I need to do it, and just accomplishing more and more. Start hiring people, so on and so forth. In 1997, the year that I quit Red Lobster and the year that I got married, that's where I flipped my first house, and I didn't know anything. I just did it because... I saw Carlton Sheets, and that's the whole reason why I even got my real estate license. And to be truthful is, I'm so hyper and so spazzy at that time, I don't even know how I got through the classes. I'm not even sure. Because you couldn't do them online back then. You had to physically go somewhere and sit in class. And that's not me. I'm like the Tasmanian devil. I, I, you know, like even me sitting here like is, is very unusual. Sitting in one place for me is not something I typically do. Ron, how fast do I look at houses? As I do. Yeah, yeah. Out, right, right, exactly, exactly. So, like, it's just I'm, I'm a quick moving pace type person. Like, I have an office myself, and I'm just never there because I'd have to sit around and talk to my employees and things when I could just do it on the phone while I'm going between houses. You know, I'd rather do that. I want to keep moving. So, another like makeup of how I am, you know, I just want to keep going and going and going because I like it. You know, I just, again, just trying to prove to everybody what I'm doing. So finally, in my real estate career, I realized that I can do all this listing and selling. I can make a lot of money, but these clients are driving me crazy, okay? They're just, it's just eating up all my time and energy my whole life. You know, maybe, maybe I am making a million dollars in a year off gross close commissions, but it's eating up every, every essence of who I am because the client always wants something, and it's always when they want it, and I always have to answer when they want and it was all the time because I just did that many transactions. So I never had any space to myself. And I, and I did really well, but then I started like going, well, you know what? I'm smarter than every single investor that I know. All the houses I sell to investors, I'm smarter than they are. So most of the time, a real estate agent is not as wise as an investor is. Okay, Usually the investor is wiser because they're spending their own money 
They, they want to make sure they make a profit. They know rental rates. They know rehabs. They know all this. And I already knew it because I was flipping houses myself. There was actually a year back in the 90s where I did 90 transactions and I flipped 12 houses without a single person helping me. I had no one helping me. I did it all myself. Like the, at that time, there was no emailing or anything like that. So the title company would call me the next day and go, did you really order title work at 2 o'clock in the morning? I'm like, yeah, that's when I can do the clerical work. Um, uh, during the day, I'm just dealing with people all day. I couldn't do anything clerical. I always said from 9 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night, it's to meet with clientele. It's to talk to clientele. It's not to do clerical work. So like, that's one thing that I can state is like the clerical type stuff, don't worry about that. Worry about networking. Worry about getting in touch with people. Because everybody in this room is a salesperson. I don't care if it's acquiring houses. I don't care if it's wholesaling. I don't care if you're a real estate agent. I don't care if you're flipping houses. You guys are all salespeople. And, the, and, the, and in sales, it's all about numbers game. All right? So if you contact no one, your results are nothing. If you contact 10 people, your results might still be zero too as well. So you just have to contact a lot of people. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Is that on a daily basis, what you should try to accomplish is how do I make a lot of contacts? Because without a lot of contacts, you will not accomplish your goals ever. Okay? So there's, there's a rule of thumb that I have, okay, that I want to make sure the day I go into is full of work. All right? A lot of people like to state, hey, look, I want to accomplish this this year. All right? And it's great to have those things. But the main thing that you want to do on a daily basis is accomplish your next day. To make sure your next day is full of contacting as many people as you can. And if you do that, then you will make all your other goals. Most likely, you will break those goals. But you have to put that kind of time and energy into one day. And every single day, do it. And if you do that, you'll accomplish what you need to accomplish. So Todd always likes to hear like how I go about a day, how I get into a day. Okay. So let me let me start let me start with my evening. All right. So my evening gets so I can get the next day prepared and get into it properly. Okay. So usually I, I work out in the evening, and there's a reason why I work out in the evening. It's so you don't sit around and eat. Okay, a lot of people work out in the morning, which, you know, I, I totally understand. Get it out of the way, but most people make their mistakes is in the evenings because they relax. Oh, man, and mentally, oh, I, I, I did good today. I'm going to relax and eat a whole bag of Cheetos. <laughs> so, so, like, you know, and, and that's like a normal mentality, right? I'm going to relax. I deserve to relax. And maybe, and maybe you do. But after you're done with that, you're like, that was stupid. That doesn't get me on what I want to weigh or anything like that. And no offense to you guys, you don't have to worry that for that about for a little bit, just slightly. You know, man, you got a good like probably five to six years, and you're going to be like, man, why did I learn how to eat everything at 18? I still want to eat everything I want to eat at 18. Yeah, you, know, you just can't do it anymore. So keep that in the back of your mind. You learn almost all your eating habits too when you're 18 years old. Yes, you're going to screw up because that's what your eating habits are. If you get older and stuff like that, and you're still eating like an 18 year old. Yeah, you look down at your midsection, and you're like, dude, go <laughs> why? But that's that's the reason why it happens. Because mentally, you made up your own diet when you're 18. You don't have anybody controlling you on what you're eating or anything like that. You're typically making enough money. You can control what you want to eat at that time. That's great. So so again, I work out during the evening, so I'm not like sitting around and eating. I want to keep myself occupied so I don't make mistakes. Okay. So it's pretty late when I work out. Then after I work out, I go and make my meal for the next day. Because I want to accomplish so much stuff that following day, I don't want to worry about what I'm going to eat, where we're going to go, how we're going to do it, what I want to eat. All that takes up time and energy. I don't want to spend that time and energy on that. And I'm going to tell you that a lot of times, hello, a lot of times that you know, you're spending like a half an hour to an hour just thinking about food. Is that what you want to? Hey. You know what I did? Over the last 10 years, I spent at least an hour a day thinking about what I was going to eat. Anybody in the room say that's what they want to accomplish? That guy right there? 
<laughs> You're kidding me. Come on, you like food that much? God oh, bless no, you. No, I'll, I'll you like no, no. You, you still raise your hand. I have to think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, so I prepare all my meals for the next day so I don't have to think about it. Oh, yeah. That looks good. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I got to, I, I, I got like a sinus infection and my throat's driving me crazy, so this will help me out a little bit. Unless you want me to just like talk and nothing comes out. All right, so that's what I do. I, I prepare my meal and then right after that, I have everybody all day just text me. Anything they need from me, any houses they want me to review, just text me with everything. Text me, text me, text me the, the address, the price, you know, how could I get in it? That's all I care about. I don't want emails. My staff gets all my emails. I don't want them to have it. Just text me a price and an address, and I'm good. And that way, right after I make my meals, I sit down with my phone and a nice notebook. I should have brought it in. Just when I got from my kids laying around the house that they never used. And I just start writing down every single, you know, text. You know, so I take all the addresses, and then I start researching them, every single one of them. You know, so then I just write them down on a pad of paper, and then I go through the MLS too as well and see if there's any houses there. And then any, anybody I need to call, do, staff members, this, that, write that right on there again. Then when I get everything done through the MLS and I get everything done through all my taxes, then if there's a house that I want to look at. Then I start putting times by them and put times by everything. So I'm going to this house, and this house, this house. So typically, I'm looking at about 10 to 12 houses a day and every half an hour. I don't waste any time, zero time, just going from one house to the other. So what I do with that sheet of paper, I take a picture of it. Usually it's a couple sheets long. Send it over to my assistant. She sends me everything that's like PDFs or all the MLS listings to me. So I have them all in the order of how I put the times in there. And then I just go and she schedules them through the MLS. I schedule them with the, the wholesalers or real estate agents that give me all the addresses. And then I just go and look at houses. So in the morning though, before I start looking at houses, I go and I have houses that I have rehab that are done that are active listings. And so what I do is I call every single agent that shows my houses. One, I try to work out a deal with them on, on my own house. Like, hey, is there anything I can do to help facilitate, put it together? Did you have any questions? All right, that's one thing I do, okay? Because if I can sell my own house, that's good, right? I'm selling a house. Two, I say, hey, agent, if you ever have properties that are distressed, let me know. I don't care about commissions. Let me know. I get deals just off doing that. L luckily, I sell a couple hundred properties a year. And by doing that many, you can imagine the amount of agents I contact, thousands in a year. Again, think of the contacts you need to make every single day. And if you continue that, you won't do all your goals. All right? And I'm going to tell you, I don't care how you do it. Sometimes it's as easy as this door knocking. I'm going to tell you right now that if you went out there and started knocking on doors, you're going to find a house to flip and you're going to find a house to wholesale if you're a wholesaler. All right? If you're a real estate agent, you'll find a house to list. It's not hard. It's all in your head that you think it's that hard. It's that easy. And sometimes hearing it, it's that easy. You're like, I could really do that, couldn't I? I'm going to tell you, go to a neighborhood where you want to pick up whatever house you want to pick up. If you door knock, you're going to get it. If you spend 40 hours a week doing that, I don't see how you can't, especially if you're in a distressed neighborhood. So don't think it's hard. It's easy. It's just all in your head. And it's numbers game. Remember, numbers. If you knock on enough doors, somebody's going to say yes. You call enough people, somebody's going to say yes. You send out enough emails, somebody's going to say yes. You run commercials on the radio or on the television, somebody's going to contact you. It's about contacts. Remember that. And I'm going to keep on saying it. Without, without the contacts, you can always look in the mirror and go, nothing happened good today. It's because you didn't have enough contacts. So that's what you need to work on 
is how do I make my list where I contact a lot of people? And as long as you're doing that, everything will fall in line. You don't do that, you're always going to wonder. And when I got into real estate, again, I never had an adult conversation. I was horrible. But some guy handed me a book called A Bresser. And what A Bresser is, and they, and they only have them online right now. No one ever uses them anymore. What? You don't use A Bresser anymore. Come on. I said that Yeah. So somebody handed me A, a Bresser. Okay, you guys ever watch the Godfather movies? Probably, right? Do you guys know who Luca Brasa is? Yeah. All right, the big Italian guy, he got his hand like shoved down and a knife on the table. Well, this big Italian guy in my real estate office, when I first started, hand me a brasser. What a brasser is, is basically a county book in alphabetical order of the city, in alphabetical order of that city, of the streets in that city. I grew up in Sterling Heights. I just called everyone in Sterling Heights because he handed me the book and said, call. And it was funny because every meeting, they would go, hey, look at this young kid. So I'm 52 years old right now. Can you imagine what I looked like when I was like 25? I was just like, I looked like a kid. I was worse than you dudes. You guys look very mature to how I looked. I was super skinny. You know what I mean? This like look like I was at like you know maybe I was sixteen years old. So like he'd be like the office manager would go, look at this kid. He just listed a property. Da 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 da, and like embarrass me. But he was really trying to see everybody else. Look, all he did was call people. All you people that didn't get listings, it's because you didn't do shit. That's what he's basically saying. So again, I see this was contact. So. I, I didn't know what else to do, so I just did that. I called and I called and I called. I called for hours straight, and people come up to me in the office and they go, John, that's hard. I go, uh, I don't know, you ever peel like 10,000 shrimp in a day and you didn't have air and your hands are all full of this shrimp crap and you're standing up and, it, and the veins are all over you? I think this is easy. I'm dressed nice in a suit, sitting down at a desk, and it's air conditioned, and people are telling me no on the phone. That doesn't hurt me not one bit because it, it's faster that I get to a yes anyways. I could take all those no's. He doesn't like what, what I was saying. So. so, yeah, so, I mean, it's about the contacts again. That's all it was, contacts, contacts. I'll just keep on hammering home, you know. Contact enough people, somebody's going to say yes to you. And that's all what we're looking for. We're looking for somebody to say yes to every, everything what we're trying to accomplish. So what, what, I, what I did in my real estate business is I got too much clientele like I was stating. It got overwhelming. I did really good, made a lot of money. But then I started realizing that I was smarter than the investors. And it was kind of cool because I basically would go to my investors and say, look it, not showing houses to you anymore. I know exactly what you're looking for. And this was during the time when it was foreclosure haven. Like nutty, crazy, couldn't even look at them all in a day, but yet I did, sort of Todd. So, so I, I would just get out there and I would just find the right house for the right investor. And I would just write the offers for them and I'd just say, look, it, I'm going to let you know, investor, when I get you a house. And the good ones, they were like, yes, John's calling me again. Yes, we got another house because they would be so excited because every house I would give them, they would make money. Whether they were running them, flipping them, they could do high end, they could do low end, they could do a little bit of work. There were so many houses out there, I could just get them houses. And I would sell like a couple hundred properties a year and never show them a house. So I thought that was cool. That limited out a lot of my time. And then I still did the regular clientele, listing, selling properties. I even carried a hundred listings for over a decade straight, which was crazy. Again, my, my real estate, I just did it real heavy. I did a lot of it. Then, then I ran into some guys, just like I ran into Todd, just looking at houses. I ran into these two guys from Israel. And I said, hey, guys, I have no time to discuss things. I know you want to with me. But I can find you a lot of houses. Hey, how about you do this? I can't get off my, like, my route. How about you just follow me around from house to house? And they did. And they followed me around from house to house to house, and they were like, yeah, this dude knows what he's doing. So what I did was I worked with them, and I started selling them houses. 
but they also were buying houses from many other people because the real estate was so low that you know they couldn't go wrong. You got you got to understand, okay? When when the big drop happened, let's just say that, and this is probably pretty true numbers, that real estate lost eighty percent of its value. A hundred thousand dollar house became a twenty thousand dollar house, okay? But the fluctuation of rent wasn't the same. The rent went from Let's say, let's say if it was $1,000 on that $100,000 house, that it was more like it went to $700 instead of the, you know, down to 20%. It lost 30% of its value, not 80% of its value. That's why during those times, everyone wanted to buy houses for rentals here. Okay? You got the real estate drop 80%, and the leasing market only dropped 30%. Gigantic margin now. Gigantic margin. So everybody's flocking here, including the Israelis I ran into. So I started selling them houses, and they saw that I was more organized than any other person that they were dealing with. A guy came into town that was overseeing their buying and selling. He looked at everything, and he came to me and he said, we're going to quit. We're not doing this anymore. Because what happened was, is... They bought houses off of numbers, just from real estate agents you can thought they could trust. And so what happened was, is they bought these properties that shouldn't have been bought, that seemed like good deals, that didn't have rental licenses, thought they had tenants in them, <coughs> thought they had rental licenses when they don't, didn't have tenants at all. Like just every single problem you can possibly imagine. So the problem is they bought hundred of these properties. So when he got and saw like, oh my gosh, this is a wreck. Why am I getting tickets from the, the cities? Because you don't have rental licenses and because the, they were buying suburban areas. So you can't get away with it. Like in Detroit, all day. You can probably get away with that all day, but not in the suburban areas. You know, you get tickets left to right and they're starting to get tickets, so on and so forth. So like they were like, John, we just got to quit. And I said, you know what? I think I can solve your problem. As I said, how about I do this for you? How about I take everything you have and I'll fix it? All right? So I'll work on fixing all that for you. And then every single house, what I'll do is I'll buy it myself. All right? I'll, I'll rehab it. I'll cert it. All right? And I'll find a good qualified tenant. How about I do that? Then you go over to Israel and concentrate on your marketing and just sell all these for me. Just do it. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. And so I charged him like a fee for doing all that, you know, which was, you know, a big chunk of fee, but now they don't have to worry about rehabbing them, renting them out, getting the rental license, you know, managing them. I did it all for them. We did hundreds together. So that worked out real well. Then they started pressing me. They wanted me to do more and more and more. And I was like, no, I just want to do this. I'm not going to get in your business and run your business for you. So we parted ways. Then after that, then I, shortly after, I started, I started researching things and I found that they do real estate shows. And they do these real estate shows in Vegas, all right, where there's this marketing company that would market, hey, look it. You can, you, can, you can go ahead and buy and sell real estate, make a lot of money, and by the way, we have all these turnkey properties here for you. Well, I already supplied turnkey properties. I knew how to do it, upside down and backwards and forwards. Did hundreds of them with these Israelis. So I was like, I went to the show, got in with them, and then I did like probably seven, 800 of them with them. All right? And that's how I got my property management company so big because they partnered up with me and then I had 1,000 units in it. Because all the other houses they were selling to as well went into my management company. So I, I had a big management company. I started selling houses to them. Then they stopped doing it because, again, they didn't do it properly, just like the Israelis. They thought they knew what they were doing, but all the other providers weren't providing rental licenses, so on and so forth. And then you ran into problems. So that, 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 that kind of halted up again. And then I was just like, well, now at this time, it was right around like, you know, I did that with, the market, with them from like 2013 
to about 2017. And then prior to that was the Israelis, so time frame wise. And then I was like, the market's so good right now, I'm just going to flip houses. I'm going to forget about ever selling real estate again. I'm just going to buy and sell houses. And that's what I did. And so I've, I've turned that into what I have now where I'm doing a couple hundred a year and I just either acquiring something or selling something, you know, every single day. And that's just what I do now. And I just, it, it, I like it. I can get everything done by like five o'clock. I don't have to like listen to why somebody doesn't want to buy a house like a regular client. And I just like, well, I like the rat race of everybody running me everywhere too as well. So that's just kind of what I do. And, uh, and I, I mean, I, I think I'm at a point where you want, you want, you need anything more? You want me to ask questions and anybody that wants to ask questions? Yeah, we'll do that in two seconds. So after five o'clock, then what do you, do you have a routine? You oh yeah. Five o'clock? Yeah. Five o'clock. I, I, you know, I typically get home from anywhere to five to like five thirty, And then I go right to my wife and I say, what do you want to eat? Cause I cook for her every day. And I just enjoy it, and that's what I like to do. So I, I cook for her, and then I usually cook for myself. Maybe I'll rest, like, for half an hour. And then I'll, I'll like, like tonight, after I'm done here, I'm going skating. And, like, I, I skate a lot. Like, I go to roller rinks. I'm on roller blades. I do a whole bunch of fancy stuff that's like the roller skaters do, and that's just what I do. I just like it. keeps me fit. keeps my mind not in real estate either. Like, it, it's, so, it's great because it's a great distraction. You got music, you got people you got to go around, and I'm doing tricks. You know what I mean? So, like, like there's enough distraction there that either I'm going to kill myself or I go back to real estate for whatever reason while I'm skating. But I just enjoy it, you know. So, I typically skate somewhere between 6 and 8. And then after that, then I go and do my workout, and then the whole evening thing, we're making meals, and then start writing down my whole list. And, and, and it's like the same day every day. It's like Groundhog's Day. About Saturdays and Sundays, I know you kind of. Um, I mean, I still, I still, I still work, but it's, it's. It, there's much less houses I have to look at because it, a lot is based too upon the MLS. So when you get into a day like Saturday, there's less houses listed on a Saturday, and there's a, not very many on a Sunday. So typically, my Mondays are my lightest days, just because like people aren't hounding me as much on a Sunday too to say, hey, I got this house, I got that house. Don't think they ever don't stop doing that, but it's less. So Monday is typically my like my lightest day, but then I got all these houses all over God's great earth that I got to do work with anyways. Either I got to leave comments to put them up for sale. I'm checking out something. I'm going over layouts. I'm going with my project manager over all the houses too as well. So let me get into my business a little bit. So w what I do for my business is one, I acquire all the houses. So I'm acquiring 200 houses a year by myself, and I could just do it. You know what I mean? Which, which if I had to tell you that it would really take a staff, I believe, of at least three people paying them 75000 with bonuses, it's like a $300,000 job just to acquire what I acquire. And I think that's being very modest and, and, and because they might even take more. All right, so I do that. That's what I do. But I do a lot more than that, too, as well. So I meet with my project manager at every single house. Everyone, I, I, I go there. I meet with them. I go over the entire rehab. Now, it only takes us 10 minutes because we've done thousands together. But it's still, I have to meet with them. We're still laying out a kitchen. And if you've seen how fast I laid out kitchens, you'd be, like, awestruck. You'd be like, what? How would you even see that? I because I lay out almost every single house, even the ones I don't get. So, no, no, no kidding. I'm talking. About, I'm close to a million houses that I probably looked at and laid out kitchens. So, how fast do you think I can do that? Real fast, you know, just because I've been through so many. Because I gotta, I gotta place a rehab out properly, even the houses I don't get. I have to bid properly just in case I got it. You know what I mean? So. So, I, you know, I, I do that with my project manager every single house. We're laying it out, saying what kind of flooring. We even discuss, like, what crews we have available and where they are just so we can get them in the right places at the right timing, you know, like when are we going to close, that type of thing. All right? You're, you're not a control freak, right? You're the, not that you couldn't hire someone to... I, you, know what, you know what's funny is, like, I'm a control freak of what I do. 
but I give away a lot and I don't control it whatsoever. In fact, I love it because I actually have probably the best makeup of employees I've ever had. And so because of that, that's why I want to take advantage of what the market is and my employees and what I got going on to try to, to, to do as much as I can. Because I know this makeup is only going to last so long. Like, you know, like my project manager may retire in three, four years. You know what I mean? And it's going to be hard to find somebody who experiences him to do what he does. So are you just doing what you'd like to do then? Yes. I, I, picked, I picked two things. One, I like doing it. I like running all over God's great earth. Okay? Like I say, I'm a very hyper, high energy type person. That's what I like to do. So, and the other thing, I'm super skilled at it. So, like, I'm lucky that I got something that I like that I'm good at. You know, or maybe I just tried hard enough and that's how I got good at it. You know, because I'm kind of relentless with that. You know, like when I want to accomplish something or do something, I'm not going to let anything stand in my way. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. So, it, it, it's sometimes hard to, like, think about, like, did I just do something I, I really like or did I just get good at it and I like it now? <laughs> you know what I mean? What is it? But it doesn't matter anyways, does it? Yeah. So, so yeah, it, it, it's kind of nice that, that, I, that I'm good and I, and I do it. At least I think I'm good at it. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I just like it. Um, then let's, let's, talk, let's talk about money. All right. So, John, how do you do that many properties, right? How do you do 115 at one time? How do you buy that many? Where do you get the money from? Another thing that I want you guys to think about, okay? Everybody in this room, if you're saying, I can't buy a house because I don't have money, all right? And I'm sure everybody's thought about that. There's not one person that has thought, oh, man, I got so much money, I'll buy whatever the hell I want. Mm, most likely not. So, so if, 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 if and I'm saying because I like buy houses. I mean, if you want to buy, like, Lambos and stuff like that. You, you might not go too far with your investors, unless you're flipping them. You know, so so um, like with houses, I could lean them. They I, they knew I knew what I was doing, so they lent me money. So it, just after years and years, and again, it's it's, it's selling. It, it's me selling myself on he lend me money. Again, it's about contacts. Again, all that's just pure contacts. You contact enough people, somebody's going to tell you yes. They will give you money. Okay. All right, so just been doing it for a long time. Now I have like ten million dollars of people that just lend me money. Okay, so like it's not hard for me. Plus I have my own because you know I, I flip houses. I make money off you know the houses that I flip. Not every single one, you know. Once in a while I make a mistake. You know I'm not perfect. It's it, it's rare, but you know it does happen. So 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 then I have my own money. What I do with my own money is is that I typically, on anything that's purchased, say, around like 120 or more, I'm typically getting all the money from one of my investors, 100% of it to, for the purchase. Then the rehab is all mine, okay? My average rehab per week, like my bill, is $185,000 a week. So I have a guy in my office, okay? I, I can call him a controller, an office manager, but what he does is, I let him deal with all those investors, all the $10 million, it's about 30 people, and the money coming in and going out. Because I close on a house, the money goes back to the investor, then we buy another house, it goes back again. Okay. Typically, a lot of my investors, they don't ever want their money back. They're just like, let it sit there. You get another house, just lock it up to it. And luckily, I'm good at buying houses, so like, then, I, then they just roll walls around. Okay. And then the other thing is, too, because I've been doing this for decades, it's a referral basis on those lenders, meaning that every so often, every couple months, hey, I, you, you deal with so-and-so, I got, and I just recently, a million dollars. I got $200,000. I've had the, 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 um, the, the parents go to their kids and go, hey, you got 30000 Okay, we'll use it, whatever. You know, we'll use that on small rehab or something like that. So I get referrals on that now and again it's because i made enough contacts so look at if money and you think is your issue and, and typically i'll say it's your issue if one you can find houses to either flip you know what i mean like you can find them like that's not your problem i can find real estate all day i just can't find the money well stop working on the real estate and start working on the money go to people that know you like you and trust you 
all right, and start asking them. Again, this is a numbers game. You ask enough people, someone will say yes to you, no doubt. And if you can already find the real estate, now you, now you got it. You got the real estate and you got the money. Now you can flip a house, all right? So just keep that in mind. You know, you can do it. It's not hard. I'm not that brilliant. You know what I mean? I've just been, I'm just persistent, okay? So the, the other thing too is with, 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 with the money is, you just want to explain it's, 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 it's a mortgage and note, just like a regular a mortgage company would give you, and then you just sign that. So it's not that hard. You can go on the internet, find your own mortgage and note, make sure you go over it, make sure you understand it, and so when you're selling yourself to people, you can go ahead and do it properly, all right? So that's how you acquire money and you get the real estate. Now, who has a problem in this room of knowing what the rehab might be? All right? Okay. All right. So most of you probably live in a house, correct? Because I say most of you, you, you either own a house or you live in a house, right? You might live in your parents' house, maybe. Okay. So, and it's just because you're young. I'm not trying to like insult you or anything like that. I understand that. When I, I lived in my parents' house until I was 25 years old. So hopefully you're out before me. All right. But if you can live there, live there. Cool. Okay, so because you live in a house and you don't understand what a rehab is or how much it is, because you need, you need these three factors. You need to find houses, all right? You need the money, but if you don't know what a rehab is, could you make a mistake? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, so how, how you do it, and the reason why I say do you live in a house is now you have a house. That house has a roof, has windows, has, has you know, walls, has electrical, has plumbing, has heat and cooling. Let me ask you, could you call up contractors and have everything quoted out in that house? Even your parents' house. Hey, mom, dad, I'm trying to figure out rehabs. So I'm going to have these guys come in. I'm going to ask them a ton of questions. Okay? Like, hey, I want to call on three painting crews, right? You're going to get three quotes. Start asking them a lot of questions. Like, okay, what do you, what does it cost to paint this room, that room? How much per square foot? Da, 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 da. By the time you're done with three, you probably are going to know a little bit about painting, especially if you ask a lot of questions. So you can, if you do that with every aspect, from a heating cooling person to a plumber to a roofer to a guy that installs windows, and you call three for each single one, you're going to learn it. You're going to understand it. And then you can start talking the right lingo too. And the other thing that you accomplish is, is that if you acquire a house, guess what you need? Contractors. Now you've interviewed a whole bunch of them. And you might say, oh my gosh, I really like these guys, and I really like these guys over here. Now you got your contractors too as well. You could solve two things by doing this, okay? And then you can learn a lot too. And, and it, does it cost you any money? No. And everybody, I think in this room, it seemed like they lived in a house, right? And maybe somebody's got an apartment in here, you know, but typically ever, almost everybody's living in a house in here. So you got it. You got it all there. It's just work. It's just work. You guys got to pick up the phone and call a lot of people, get them over to the house and ask them a lot of questions and you will learn. You know, if you're, if you're real estate people, anybody real estate agents in this room? Wow, there's not too many. Okay, well, that, you know, with real estate agents, you know, because you got your real estate license, I mean, you want to be there during your inspections. You can learn so much from your inspectors. You know, a lot of people are just jibber-jabbing with their clients so much, they don't even know what the heck's going on. You know what I mean? Hopefully you listen to your inspector and why you're doing your inspection stuff. Do you, do you sell a lot of houses or? No, I mean, you just a couple here or there? Okay, okay. So, yeah, you, you got a little bit of experience. <laughs> yeah, if you go to the meetups and you meet a contractor, you can even go to, you know, and say, look, when you bid houses, can I go with you? Can I help you anyway? And he can teach you something. You know, yeah, or, or, or if you're looking at houses, like, you know, you're looking at houses. Here's another thing is, too. If you're trying to acquire houses and you have a real estate license, if you have an area that you want to be in, look at a lot of real estate. You know, that's the one thing when I was learning, what was really nice is, is that with a real estate license, I could learn and sell my clients a house. I could show houses to them and I'm like, oh yeah, I know the area now. I understand it. I understand what's a good deal, what's, what's not a good deal. I can understand what's in good shape, not good shape with the pricing. And I would learn. And then I would get paid by them, you know, buying the house once I found the right house for them. So that, that was kind of cool. I, I liked it. Um, but even with somebody that doesn't have real estate licenses, you sure as heck can get a real estate agent to show you houses. 
I don't think that's ever going to be that big of a problem. So if there's a particular area you want to work in, look at a lot of real estate there. And then you're going to understand it. You're going to figure it out. You know, I would be so inspired when I, when I first started, you know, working in real estate when somebody picked a different area. Like I was so much in Macomb County because I, I grew up in Sterling Heights. I'd be showing everything in Macomb County. And then once in a while, they'd be like Southfield. Oh man, this is great. I'm learning Southfield now. Now I have a better understanding of Southfield, not only to help clients out and pricing and things like that as a real estate agent, but I always had in the back of my mind, if I wanted to find a deal there, now I just open my horizons up even more. Now I know that area too as well. So like how I am right now, when I say I get in the MLS late at night, okay? So like during around this time of year, there's typically around 500 houses that are newly on the market or price change or some kind of activity that goes on in one day, about 500, okay? So I look through those 500 every night and sometimes periodically through the day. Like if I'm down in Wayne County and I know I don't have another appointment, say for an hour, then sure as hell, I'm looking down in Wayne County to see if there's another house so I don't have to go back to the next day all the way to Wayne County because I'm already there. So I'm looking, so I'll look through that very quickly and assess it to see if there's another deal there, and then I'm on it right away too as well. You know, I always like to be the fastest and efficient that I can because it, it does get you deals. You know, the quicker you get to a house, the quicker that you can bid on it, the quicker that you can get back with people. People like a person that is on the ball. You know what I mean? They, like if you're lackadaisical, that, I mean, it shows. You know what I mean? But if you can make decisions and understand what you're doing and, and make those decisions quick, then you're gonna get, you're gonna get deals. Okay, and that's why you want to understand real estate. You want to understand the rehab. You want to have the money there for you so you can make those decisions. And if you don't have that lined up, it makes it harder to make those decisions. Do I have the money? I don't know. That person I kind of talked to maybe said yes, maybe said no. And I mean, it, it makes it difficult to make a decision then now, isn't it? So luckily, I put myself in a position where I can make those decisions quick. I can make them fast. So when I say I look through the MLS, okay, I look at those 500 houses that are typically listed on a common day. Anybody want to try to guess how long that takes me to assess those 500 houses to make sure that I don't miss a deal? How long do you think it takes me? How long? I wish I wish I could do it in five minutes. No, it 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 takes me about like 15 to 20 minutes. Total. Yeah, total to assess 500 houses. Okay, and it's because of what I said. I was able to be in the areas, work in the areas, buy in the areas, look at enough houses in the area, so I just know what a good deal is. Like there's a lot of you where you have your area, right? You, you do business there. Is it that hard to figure out anymore or is it like all second nature? Like you just know automatically what a deal is. You see the street name and you tell me the address numbers in Detroit and Todd's going to know exactly if it's a deal or not. Right? You're just going to know, especially in the city of Detroit. So, I mean, that's how you want to you figure them out. Go ahead. Do you do any work in the city of Detroit? I, I, I do, but I, I don't do very much. I'm kind of picky. Um, it's just because there's a, there, Detroit's just a little bit more challenging, and I got one project manager. You know, But I am buying down there. I will buy down there. And I mean, hey, look it. I'm doing right now about seven or eight, Okay which in the makeup of things isn't a lot for me. Which street is like one you can remember <coughs> right now? Like or um, I mean, I, I, I had a couple on Piedmont, right in Grandmont. Oh, I got one on Piedmont. Oh, man. <laughs> How'd you get it? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> so, John, are you holding your, any of your properties? Um, I don't. I don't hold them. I'm going to start coughing. I just know it. <laughs> Why don't you hold them? Uh, I'll tell you why. Okay. Never. Never. <laughs> okay. So this is what I'll say this to you. There's a thousand different ways to make money in real estate. There's no wrong or right answer. But this is my answer for why I don't hold properties. I'm able to acquire enough real estate to keep all that money going. And there's no way that me buying a rental property will ever net me back even close to what I could flip a house. But it's not exactly a right answer because if you start thinking about this is 
I'm running around all over God's great earth, right? I'm never stopping. I always say it's like Black Friday for me every single day, every single hour, every single minute. And I don't know where the store is until someone tells me. So that's where it's wrong. I'm going to say I'm wrong. And the reason why I'm going to say I'm wrong, that I don't hold properties is, the reason why you want to hold properties is so you don't have to work like I'm working. I like it, but I can't quit necessarily because now I don't have that nice stream of rental properties. But I've done so much flipping, I got enough money, I'm not worried, okay? But that's not exactly, that's why I'm saying it's, it's not exactly what I'm doing should be how you think. It shouldn't. You should probably acquire properties for rent and have enough of them so you don't ever have to work again. You have enough income coming in, you don't have to work. You'll have the freedom. That freedom will allow your brain to concentrate on something else to make you money again. All right? So I'm not saying I'm, a, I'm right. This is the way I do it. Because I have that type of personality where I just want to buy something, get it fixed up, and get rid of it. Fast. I don't want to sit on something. I don't want to hold it. My personality is more of that. It's not exactly 100% right. It's not 100% wrong. Again, many different ways to make money in real estate. Can you um, go on vacation and what happens to the business if you ever take a that's a off? That's a funny one, the vacation thing you just said. <laughs> well, see, I'm, I'm such a, like a, a person that is so regimented. A, a vacation doesn't fit into that regiment. So again, I can't say I'm 100% right. And, and probably... I'm on the whacked out wrong end. But that's just how I am. In, in, in my family, like my wife goes with my daughters. They're on like a, like a company dance team. They go all across the country. She goes with them. They have a good old time with all the dance moms and all that crazy stuff like you see on TV. It's just like that, in fact. All the drama. It's just nuts. All right. So, so like, and it's good. I stay out of it. So, so like, they go. And I always ask my wife if she ever wants to go, go with me, and I, I really don't get that great feedback. Maybe she doesn't like me that good, but it's okay. No, I, and I, nothing like that. We have a great marriage and stuff like that. But my wife and I are more like grounded people where we just don't want to run all over the place. We, my wife rather sit in our theater room, watch her shows, and let me cook her dinner. You know? So that's what that, and, and I kind of the same way where I just like my regiment. I like it. I mean, look at it. I have a job where every day is a different day. I'm going to different places. I'm trying to acquire real estate. I'm, I'm negotiating. I'm doing all these things, and I think that's the coolest thing ever. I'd rather put a deal together than sit by the side of a pool and relax because that doesn't get me going. What I do gets me going. What I do inspires me. Relaxing doesn't inspire me, not whatsoever. And again, I'm a different personality. I can't say that's right for everybody. Most people like to relax. I hate it. I mean, when I fall asleep, I fall asleep real good. You know what I mean? I, I, I put my head on the pillow. I don't even remember what goes on because I'm just exhausted. But I like it. I like being that type of you know, personality where I just do that. Go ahead, Ron. So when you're looking through those 500 houses in 15 minutes, what do you look for that triggers something that's a tail? Like um, it, it's usually area price, area price. That's typically what the first thing is. So like... If you know an area well enough and you know the price point, then you're going to know if it's a deal. So, so I look at that, just like that, that short little thing. So like if, if it's a good price for that area, then I start looking at other things. Obviously, if it's a one bedroom and 500 square feet, I'm like, nope. You know what I mean? Like then it just limits it right out. So I start looking at square footage, bedrooms, basement, garage. You know, that's what you just kind of additionally look for those things that kind of spurs me. And it makes it go, okay, it's really a deal or not. So what's that formula, formula look like for analyzing that deal? Oh, shit. You want what's in my head? Well, these guys are <laughs> I already know what's in your head, John. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I saw you them up. Okay. All right. So, so like, again, it, it's price and area is the first thing. All right? If you know the area well enough, you'll know that that price point is good for that area. All right? Like, okay, uh, uh, somebody pick an area where they work. North Plymouth. 
Inkster. Inkster? Inkster. I like Inkster. Okay, let's go. I, I know you do. All right. All right, let's, let's, take, let's take Inkster. Does anybody know Inkster that well? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what would you say is a price point in Inkster where you say it's a good deal just by the price? Are you kidding me? Come on. 30, 30. I, I would say I would say even in today's market, I would say 50. Yeah. 50 is probably a good number. So if I see something in Inkster for 50, then I'm looking further into it. I want to look at square footage. I want to see basement, garage, bedrooms. And I'll look a little bit further. Again, I, I don't have to look that hard. I know where everything's on that MLS sheet. You know, it's going to take you a little bit if you need to assess things like that. So that's just like a, an area where I got a price point. And if it fits into a certain price point, I know it. And that's every single area because I've worked in them all. Like, you know what I mean? So I just understand it well enough that I can assess it that well, okay. which is nice. How are you then uh, writing or calling the agent to get an offer in? All right. So late at night, I do, the, I do this, and, and there's a reason why I do it. I have to do it after midnight, okay? Because how I search is, I search by a whole entire day, okay? So the MLS doesn't allow you at times during that day to limit out, you know, hey, I searched from this time, and I want everything after that. It doesn't do that. It only does it per day. So I want to look at the entire day. I do it after midnight, okay? So then I can look at the day, and it's full, all right? Because if I look even an hour early, I will lose whatever is from 11 to midnight, and I don't want to lose it. So I want to see that full day. So the day it, that you, the day that just passed, you're looking at that day? Yeah, yeah. Today, 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 I'm doing it at midnight to look at that entire day. Yeah. All right? So that's what I do. I look at that entire day because after midnight, and again, it's a kind of wacky schedule because who wants to do that? But I'm a late night dude. Again, I got a lot of energy. I can do it. All right, so... So that, that's how I do it. I look at that entire day, all right? And then, again, it's price point, area, price point, area, price point, area, and then look at the other factors. And then, and then those other factors are size, basement, garage, bedrooms. And then, and then I can really assess that and say, okay, with these other items, is it still really a good deal? Then the question you asked, how do I do all that? Okay, so remember I write everything down. So I write this all down, and I put times next to them. Okay, so then my assistant gets that whole route together. I don't download the route, and I and then after I make all the feedback calls and ask all the agents to you know sell me houses, then after that, then I just hit the road and I just go. I got my lunch already made for the next next day. Remember, I told you I make all my meals, so I'm not thinking about am I going to eat at Rallies or am I going to eat at Popeyes? I you know I don't have to think about that, and nor do I. I, I don't even put a time frame in in for me to eat. I, I just do it when I have time. How many hours? Oh, okay. I, I typically it's like from two in the morning. I go to sleep, and I get up at about eight, and I just go. I just like when I get up, I'm going. Like it's 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 on. It's not like hey, I'm gonna lounge around and get my coffee. No, hell no. I'm not that type of person. Did you catch up your sleep maybe? hours on the weekends? No. Sunday? No, that's enough. That's way more than enough for, and again, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, like, and I, I don't even tell you my, my, um, my, my guy that's kind of my controller, I know him since the fourth grade, he's always saying, like, you got a chemical imbalance. And I'm going to tell you, I, I absolutely and utterly do. The energy level that I have is not even correct. I'm like way off the charts. Like it's, it's, it's almost insane. And you could imagine when I was young, like these, these guys age. Like there's no way I could sit there. And I couldn't even sit there and just be still. I'd be like, you know, I'd be all over the place. I just couldn't do it. And that's why I don't even know how I got my real estate license when I was like 24 years old. I was still, like, still way too hyper. But I guess I, I wanted to get it bad enough. So like, yeah, I, I don't need a lot of sleep. So luckily, you know, I, and again, I don't, I don't think it's out of the ordinary. But you got to understand, my sleep might be a little bit different than everybody else's sleep. Because when I sleep, I sleep. You know, there's no like, hey, I woke up and uh, no. No, I'm too exhausted. Like, after I'm done here, and you can see, like, I'm talking pretty, like, aggressively, right? It's not like you're like, dude, this dude's boring. I can't take him anymore. What's wrong? Nothing. What I need you to do, yeah, I need you to give me a close of what you kind of talked about real quick, 
and kind of close this out. If you could well, what, what time we got? Well, <clears throat> it's getting late. Okay. All right. So, so uh, j just in close that, and again, I'm sorry I'm running a little bit late. He's, he's rushing me, no, this guy right here. No, 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 you're rushing me. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> so, so, so in close is that I just want you to think about how you can accomplish things, how you can do things, that there's no real limit that you have other than what you put on yourself. And, and, and just keep in mind that you can do things. You can do any of the things that you really think about as long as you, on a daily basis, put that kind of energy into accomplishing it. What kind of lifestyle or lifestyle are you looking for? Imagine.